Hey guys, good evening. I hope you all are doing well today. It is a wonderful weekend, as usual. Today we are going to be doing the commentary for Ninja Commando. So, uh, disclaimer, I have zero experience with this from my childhood. I don't remember ever seeing this at any arcade in my neighborhood. I came across this cartridge via a dusty box that was actually being sold when the old movie theater had closed down. And the cartridge for this was just beaten to hell. Like, it looked like it had some hours on it and stuff, and... So I said, okay. I went ahead, plugged the cartridge in, made a copy of it, got it loaded up into MAME, and pretty much got it running. So, this game reminds me a hell of a lot of Ikari Warriors with the whole isometric view and stuff, how you're just kind of constantly running up while going and killing a lot of enemies, just kind of non-stop with, like, a lot of button mashing and stuff, and... In many ways, I kind of feel like that it was commonly uh, just doing the same thing over and over and over again without any sort of real substance to it, but what the game uh, lacks in substance and makes, for, makes up for it in style. So in many ways, I kind of feel like that this is uh, peak 90s theming. You know, around the time that this game had rolled out, there was like a ton of ninja and samurai movies being produced and stuff, and then... There was also, like, weird-ass uh, ninja cop, samurai cop-style movies, and it was just kind of a thing that was, like, being done back then. And so we had, uh, this game was not the only one like this. They actually had, like, a lot of games that were like this and stuff, and so in many ways, uh, this was just kind of, for me at least, it was kind of a walking, talking stereotype. And so it kind of follows other themes as well. Um, time travel was an incredibly popular theme back then. And this game also embodies that as well, you know. You play as these characters and you go and you fight through various time periods and all that other fun stuff. And, you know, that's pretty much what the game revolves around. As usual, uh, SNK has that striking art style as well as the amazing visuals for the time but again it's important to remember that this was just basically souped up genesis more or less but it still looked really really amazing for the time so the game is actually really fun to play i had a really good time with it like i typically don't when it comes to isometric games i find that a lot of them are very hit and miss you have some of them that are really, really fun, like the uh, the Diablo franchise, you know, has always been really, really fun like that. And then Ikari Warriors was also really fun within reason. I mean, it would get kind of irritating after a while. But I find with Ninja Commando, it is the right blend of... It is the right blend of art direction and goofiness and uh, gameplay and stuff. Like, it just seems to do things really, really well. The only thing that I didn't really care for about it too much is the game would have really bad moments of slowdown. Sometimes with these games you can really see that hardware being stretched, I think. Especially with like some of the Metal Slug games and stuff, you can just like see those boards being worked to death. And so a lot of the time, you know, with Ninja Commando and stuff, it's perfectly smooth. And then you have other times where there are so many effects on the screen that the game kind of slows down to a crawl and stuff. And, you know, you just kind of have to learn to work around it for a bit. So the game doesn't really have any story. It is the stereotypical travel throughout time to kill the bad guy kind of bit and save the world story. And, you know, it's, it's very stereotypical for the time, but that's okay because it works. You know, like, I find that arcade games were not really ever meant to have, like, a revolutionary <clears throat> story or anything of the sort. They were just there to be quick little bites of fun that you could go and have while you were out of the house. So with Ninja Commando, it actually excels in that regard. I mean, the game is hard. It is uh, rather difficult in some areas and stuff, but it's still entertaining. And it's one of the few games that I was actually really grateful that I had free play on because... If I had to do this crap with, like, a set amount of credits, I would have been screwed. That would have been it. I would have never finished this mess. And strangely enough, I'm okay admitting that, you know. Um. God, this boss. Jeez. It's just so strange how they go about doing this mess. But, um. Yep, I find that the game sometimes is a little bit difficult to stare at. 
some of the pallets just don't really work well with the game. You know, like some enemies just blend right into the background and stuff, and it makes it kind of hard to shoot them. And then um, sometimes some things creep up on you so fast that you just don't really have a chance to go and react to them and stuff. I don't really think the bosses are really anything to write home about. I mean, they're very stereotypical for the areas that they represent. You know, which is fine. They try to put, like, a little bit of a weird sort of Japanese twist on it, as we typically see with, like, a lot of the games and stuff. But for the most part, they're just kind of walking, talking, stereotypical caricatures of things that you would expect to see in that era. You know, but it kind of works with the theming, I feel. This was one of the games that I was actually seriously thinking about turning on the dip switch for auto fire for but i found that when i did go and turn on the dip switch for it that it would actually force the game into a perpetual boot menu and it really just wasn't working that well so i decided to do the game anyways i was kind of sitting down and i said you know yeah it's not really working that well but i feel like i could still probably do something with it so i found that as i progressively played the game my uh, thumbs were screaming like, literally, my thumbs were just kind of, like, hardcore screaming. And I forget sometimes that arcades, you're not really meant to use your thumbs, right? You're meant to just use your four fingers. You know, you're sitting there and you're tapping it and stuff, and you're tapping the hell out of it. And so, in many ways, um, you know, going and using your thumbs, I mean, yeah, sure, you're getting a slightly better response time and stuff compared to your other four digits, but I find that sometimes the game is so intense because you have to keep that rate of fire up to keep enemies at bay that after a while it can and will inflict physical pain upon you you know so towards uh towards the end of the game you know i think like my nephew was looking at me because this is one of the few games i decided to do solo and he looks at me with the straightest face that i think i've ever seen on a child and he's like are you okay and i had laughed so hard and then i looked down and i looked at my thumb and i realized the joint was swollen and i said to myself yeah, I might not be okay, man. We may we may need to go and, like, take a break and stuff and everything else. And, you know, like, these older arcade games didn't really fuck around, I don't think. And, you know, Ninja Commando is kind of, <coughs> kind of a shining example of that. I mean, it even goes as far as to uh, reward you for keeping your stream up by going and making the overall projectile salvo wider. And so it was just really um, one of those things. So Ninja Commando kind of comes from that era back when we had like kind of piss poor translations. And so there are some lines in Ninja Commando that are just like really, really bad. And I don't mean bad as in like, uh, well, actually I can't say that. I was going to say, I don't mean bad as in poorly written. I can't even fucking bullshit my way through that. A lot of this is poorly written. You know, I can't even really, <coughs> I can't even really say that the dialogue wasn't really poorly uh, thought out. I mean, it's meant to just be your generic, stereotypical kind of storyline, I think. The big thing that Ninja Commando suffers from is piss poor translations, but you have to remember back then we didn't exactly have translation teams at the ready. They could literally go take a Japanese game and be like, oh, okay, well, we're going to perfectly translate this and everything's going to be fine. It's not like what it is nowadays. So Ninja Commando has lines that are very evidently supposed to be something else, right? And it's uh, very easy to see that it's meant to be something else, but um, it comes off as, like, very campy and very poorly written and stuff. Like, it really struggles with it. And I think that with a lot of these older Japanese games, it kind of adds to the uh, it kind of adds to the charm. It really reminds me of Wing Commander, to a certain extent. The whole all your base belong to us, you know, and it makes it like it makes it campy, it makes it cheesy, and yet for some weird ass reason, I adore it. You know, there's just something about it where I just kind of sit down and I say to myself, you know, this isn't as bad as you know people make it out to be. Yada, yada, yada. And so Ninja Commando does have these issues in this regard. Like, even the ending dialogue is very, very goofy. You know, and then there's also the stereotypical kind of overblown uh, expression 
that you see with a lot of these older games as well, you know, because uh, we didn't really have advanced animation or anything, you know, so a lot of the emotion was conveyed via body language. So it's not unusual to see a character get pissed and like they would go and they would have a frowny face, but the frowny face was not enough and so they would have to shake their fist on top of it and it's just very endearing, I think. And it makes me laugh a fair bit, you know, like I, I kind of find myself smiling about it like every single time I go and uh, witness it. I just I find myself passively smirking because it's so cute and so adorable sometimes. Speaking of stereotypes, look! It is the stereotypical... Oh, yep, there it is. But, um... Yeah, you know, like, um... I find that Ninja Commando is prime cheese. It doesn't really go out of its way to try to be revolutionary. It goes out of its way to try to be the best time possible. Which is really nice, and I kind of miss that about games a fair bit. You know, like, with... <clears throat> with newer games now, it's... When you look at them, they're like, oh, well, we have to have an amazing story. We have to go and we have to have, like, amazing graphics and stuff. And we have to have, like, an amazing orchestral soundtrack that, you know, is uh, so amazing that people are going to want it on CD and vinyl. And, you know, like, I, I see this a lot. And to be honest with you, I think, like, a lot of games kind of miss the mark these days because at their core, you know... Games are just meant to be played to have fun, you know, they're meant to be entertaining, and so I find that as gaming kind of goes over in more of this uh, cinematic direction, you know, as they become more and more like movies, they kind of struggle more and more as games, because what'll happen with newer games is they'll have amazing graphics, they'll have an amazing story, they'll have an amazing soundtrack, but a lot of the times they'll just have bad gameplay. And so I find that as gaming kind of progresses and stuff, it's not so much a it's not so much a point of poor planning, I guess. It's more of a point of poor development because I feel like a lot of developers don't really understand what people want these days. And you can tell because a lot of people complain about bad gameplay, like, oh the gameplay's bad and it's buggy. And so I think the reason why I like a lot of these older games so much is because there's not really a whole hell of a lot of thought put into the story, not really a whole hell of a lot of thought put into, like, the soundtrack. It's just, hey, how much fun can they have while playing the game? And so that's really, I think, where it's at for me because a lot of people just kind of sit there and they kind of gawk at older games. They're like, oh my god, the graphics are bad and, you know what is this soundtrack and yada yada and or they'll sit there and say oh it's incredibly difficult but the thing is is a lot of these older games the reason why they're cherished is because they're extremely playable you know like there are other facets of these games that aren't terribly memorable you know but the main thing is is that you can come back and keep enjoying the gameplay whereas a lot of games these days you play it once and you're done a lot of people go and actually have like that issue like players will go spend like $72 on a game and then they'll go they'll play it once and then since there's really no replay value you're kind of like oh I'm just waiting for DLC and of course DLC will arrive at some point you know that way they can soak you for more cash but you know, games aren't really super replayable anymore, you know, like you go and, I mean, the the big, uh, what is it, a form of replayability these days for gaming is New Game Plus. And you'll see it a lot with um, games that have like a skill-based progression system or any sort of level up system. They'll be like, oh, you can take all of your skills into a new game and either have an easier time with it or you'll be able to go and do other things with it. Like, there are a lot of merits to going and having New Game Plus, but I think that if you were to take away New Game Plus or Level Select or anything like that, I think that a lot of people wouldn't really go and uh, start up a new game because I've, I figure the and you know, I hate to say it, but I, I figure that a lot of these games are designed as one-off experiences you're not meant to go back to them and stuff you're not meant to um, with older games it's like you're meant to have a shorter experience 
that you can go and do over and over again. I find with a lot of newer games, you're not meant to have a short experience. You're meant to have a super long experience that's like 80 hours long and then you're done. And so that's kind of the weird thing because I find that as a gamer, I'll go back to a game that is short but has like a really good experience in terms of gameplay over and over and over again. And I will literally log like a thousand hours on it, like it's going out of style more or less. But longer games, I have a tendency to only go and um, I'll play them once and then be done with it. Uh, we'll go ahead and take Assassin's Creed Origins, for example. I hadn't played an Assassin's Creed game in quite some time, so I said, okay, not a problem. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and give it a good run. I went ahead, I got the Deluxe Edition, uh, core game, all DLC. Game had been out for a while, installed it, patched it, got it in the door. I, my total run, so I had spent, I think, on that edition, I had spent about 70 bucks? 70 or 80 bucks, it was on sale. And so I went ahead and played it. I did a complete run of it and stuff, and by the time I was done, the core game, I think, was only like 80 hours long, and then the DLC was like another 40? Which is not bad. For the price point, I definitely got my money's worth, but it kind of hammers home the point that once you're done with the game, you're done. So I went ahead, beat the game, beat the DLC, did everything there was to do, and then afterwards, I promptly shut the game down and I haven't touched it in almost two years. Literally, it's been two years and I just haven't really seen a need to go back to it. So it's like, okay, well, we already know the story. We've already done all the side missions. You know, the character's already max level. The character is uh, obviously not going to be able to get any better or change in this regard. You're effectively done. And so, with that being the core gameplay loop, there's really no reason to go back to it, aside from maybe if they release DLC, which I know is not going to happen because it's an old game. So it's a stark contrast, I think, to these older games where they were short, they were simple, but you were meant to go back over and over again and master them. And so I think that's why I like these older games a lot more because yes, they're incredibly difficult, but you know, you're meant to go back to them over and over and over again to go and just play them and have raw enjoyment. And then I find a lot of the newer games are also really, really buggy, which is really kind of screwed up. Like, in many ways, I kind of dread going and getting, like, a new game because I know that it is almost a guaranteed invitation to patch hell. So with these older games, they had to go and they had to release them in a semi-serviceable state. If they didn't, they simply just would not stay in business. Uh, we saw this with uh, LGN, which later became Acclaim. Acclaim went out of business, and now somebody else owns most, if not all, of their IPs. I think it's Night Dive Studios now that bought most of them. You know, like, that was kind of the fate of older gaming companies, but nowadays, you know, you can go and release games in a very buggy state, and it is socially acceptable to wait for a patch. Um... New games, they scare the hell out of me with the uh, the conditions that they roll out in. You know, I had one game, I bought it on day one, I think it was like Shooters Blood and Teeth uh, back on the Switch. And on day one, pretty much every platform that that game was on was broken. Everybody had to wait like a week and a half to go and be able to play the game properly. And the thing is, is um, yes, it was a cheaper game. It wasn't full price. I think they were only charging like 20 bucks for it. But at the end of the day, you're still making a product that people are paying for. And so imagine like going, pre-ordering this game and saying to yourself, oh, I can't wait to play it on day one. Uh, day one coming around, realizing that nothing is functioning properly. And so you have to wait like a week and a half just to be able to enjoy the game. I, in many ways, uh, don't really go and get too many new games too often anymore for these reasons. You know, I just, I know with older games they're going to have issues, but I know that older games typically came out in a more polished state than newer games. So I think uh, one of the core issues that newer games kind of suffer with is the, well, patch it later mentality. And so what has a tendency to happen is a game will come out in poop condition. Okay, fine, the game is dog shit. Very good. 
what'll happen is the community will like the game. Like, they will enjoy the game enough to become passionate about it. And then what'll happen from there is they'll wait for a patch. And I think that it leads to a lot of frustration for gamers because they'll go and they'll report bugs, like really bad bugs. I'm not talking about like funny bugs, like, you know, an enemy's face is like missing, leaving nothing but eyes and teeth, you know, or anything like that. I'm talking about serious bugs that would go and crash the game or prevent you from progressing. Just, you know, shit that just should not be there. People would go and report these bugs and I'm like, well, if we report it, they'll patch it. Most of the time, they do not give a shit. Especially if it's like a larger company, I find like I was going and doing bug reports. They were going and um, plaguing Destiny 2 for a while. And they were bugs that were literally causing the game to crash and like all this other stuff. It was just like a really bad experience. And so um, the bugs are still there some two and a half, three years later, you know, still plaguing players and everything else. And in many ways, I think that um, I think in many ways that it's kind of sad because development has gotten really bad these days. You know, like, they don't really understand that if you go and release a bad title, if the title's all sorts of levels are screwed up and stuff, the player base will crawl up your ass until you fix it. And then you have other companies that um, go and, you know, they live by this mantra of report us bugs will make it better. Warframe was like that for a while. You know, uh, Digital Extremes was definitely on top of that crap for a while. They're like, if there's something bad, we want to know so we can patch it. And it's kind of tapered off in Warframe's old age. You know, they're, they're not quite as proactive about it anymore, but Warframe, for what it is, is still an incredibly smooth experience. You know, no matter what platform you play it on. I mean, yes, it does have, like, its limitations and its fair share of issues, but they're not, like, cripplingly bad. And so one of the interesting things about it is um, I feel like a lot of developers are kind of prima donnas these days. Like, they'll go, they'll develop a game, and the weird thing is, is like, what they don't realize is that at the end of the day, they're producing a product that they are selling, right? They're not, like, yes, they are making art to a certain extent, but this isn't something that's going to be in an art exhibit where people come and gawk at it. It's going to be something that's in people's hands, and as such, it needs to be serviceable, it needs to be playable. And so I see a lot of developers these days, they get kind of upset because what'll happen is they'll go and be like, oh, the game is released, and then the game will be like a total shit show, like won't even boot past main menu. And so they get upset, and they have a tendency to throw it back in the player's face. They're like, oh, well, you know, we don't understand why the fan base is so upset. We worked really hard on this, and you're disrespecting us, and we put in tons of time. Tons of time does not mean shit if your game is so fucking bad that no one can play it. That is how that is. You can put in all the time in the world, and it does not mean shit if it is not serviceable. Gaming is not like a piece of fine art where you can go and look at it and appreciate it. It is not like a movie where you just go and watch it and decide whether or not it sucks. It is an interactive experience that if people cannot go and interact with it, they will not be happy with it. And that is how that is. So I find a lot of developers who are kind of ridiculous about it these days. They're like, oh, well, the player base yelled at us and... You know, they said that it's buggy trash, and, you know, the thing is, is if the boot fits, where? Well, you know. Now, the community in general can be rather toxic as well. You know, sometimes they're just not happy because they're not happy with something, or maybe something was changed and they weren't really satisfied with it. So what'll happen is they'll go and they'll threaten the developer. Well, that's not great. You don't do that shit. Like, I understand that people aren't going to be happy with some things, but there's no real reason, I don't think, to go and threaten anybody, you know, just because something that you don't like is going on. This is why I have a tendency to vote with my cash, more or less. <clears throat> like, I'll sit there and I'll be like, okay, well, um, you know, instead of sitting there saying, hey, you know, like getting on Twitter and be like, hey, I'll never buy this crap again. Instead of endless posturing, I just kind of sit there and say, you know, I'm not going to buy this again quietly and then proceed to not buy their shit ever again. Some companies are actually really cool about it. You know, they get better as time goes on, but 
the mass majority of companies are not. Like, for example, Ubisoft has been going and suffering from the same shit for almost, I don't know, like 15 years now. Long time to be doing anything, you know? They've been kind of suffering from the same problems. And then they wonder why the fan base is pissed. And then Bungie, you know, also has the same issues. They don't rectify it, even though fans constantly tell them what they need all the time. They still don't rectify it. And as an end result, they don't understand why the fan base is pissed. And then you have other developers, which are so damn arrogant that they'll go and release a game that is just quite literally hot garbage. And then the fans will be pissed with it and say, yeah, this really isn't that playable. And then they'll have a tendency to go flip out on fans and be like, you need to support us more. They can't support you if there's no game to play. I see this a lot in the free-to-play space. You know, like a free-to-play game will come out and it'll just be like in really bad shape and stuff. And the developer will get mad because people aren't going and playing it and, you know, holding it up on a pedestal. And so I think that it's kind of like a sad state of affairs when it comes to gaming and stuff because we've got developers ripping on gamers because gamers are going and calling them out for, well, bad business practices, essentially. You know, and as an end result, you know, people are upset they're not buying our games. Well, you have to create something that is at least reasonably polished for it to be super enjoyable. You know, it leaves a lot to be desired, I think. And a lot of people, I think, seriously kind of forget that. You know, like, they don't understand that, um, you know, if your game isn't something that can be easily played, you know, I'm not talking about, like, easy to play in terms of difficulty. I'm talking about, like, getting past the main menu and, you know, the game itself being accessible. If you can't pull that off, your game's not going to last very long. If it doesn't have good mechanics, the game's not going to last very long. And so I think the development, a lot of it these days, is actually just kind of junk development, and it's really fucking sad. So, with that thought in mind, uh, this pretty much concludes the commentary for Ninja Commando. We've only got a couple more videos left to work on. It's really exciting. Cool bananas. So, with that thought in mind, I want to thank everybody for coming out. I enjoy your time and your energy and your company. I enjoy every comment that you leave. But it has uh, been quite the journey tonight. A lot of incoherent rambling. I'm very proud of myself. But all joking aside, I hope you all had a good time with it. Seriously, I hope you did. And with that thought in mind, as always, be good to yourselves and each other. Till next time.